when he texts me, uh, I get a little uh, uh, funny feeling right here in the pit of my stomach. And uh, because I know it's very important to stand behind this sacred desk and uh, proclaim the Word of God. But I know what lives within me. And uh, I know that uh, I've asked him to use me. And uh, you better watch praying like that because he will. But, uh, you know, uh, many times I've, uh, I've stood and, you know, I've never been to school uh, to, to uh, learn how to preach. I, what I've learned, I've learned from the Word of God. What I've learned, I've, I've uh, been to revivals. After I got saved, I had a deep hunger for the Word. But when I was raised, there was, there was no God in my house. Uh, I did not know God. I wasn't raised uh, in a house where God was there. And I began to read the Word of God, and, and uh, we're going to be in Genesis chapter number 1 tonight, if you want to go ahead and turn to there, Genesis chapter number 1. But I got to thinking about Brother Paul as he was making havoc of the church and in Romans chapter number 1, and I got to thinking about how he, uh, he said these words. Those people at Rome were being mutilated, they were being destroyed. They were being uh, burned at the stake and uh, being used for human lanterns, all but because of the cause of Christ, dying for the cause of Christ. And Brother Paul, after God saved him, he was going down to Rome to preach to those people and tell them about the love of Jesus. And he said these words. He said uh, in Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that will believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek he said the gospel of Christ is the power the power of salvation for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation God thinking about salvation the gospel is this that the virgin birth that that seed that came by the Holy Ghost and impregnated Mary that day, that same seed when a man is born again and he begins to believe, that same seed comes to live within our hearts. Number one, it was the virgin birth. Paul said it is the power of God unto salvation that we believe. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Number one, it's the virgin birth. We must believe the virgin birth for the power of God unto salvation. Number two, it's the sinless life. That Jesus never sinned. He was the perfect Lamb of God. That's the gospel. That is the power of God unto salvation. That He came and He never sinned. He became sin, but He never sinned. Number two, that He was uh, uh, the perfect Lamb. As the blood was sprinkled on the sacrifice inside the uh, Holy of Holies, he was that blood. Number one is the virgin birth. Number two is the sinless life. Number three, his death on the cross for our sin. That supreme sacrifice. He's the only one that could have made that sacrifice. Number three is his sinless, his sinless life. His, number three, his death on the cross. And number four, his resurrection. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Number four is that resurrection. And I love this one right here, number five, that he's coming again. Man is limited here on earth. We're limited in time. We're all going to die. There's three things that keeps us limited one is Satan the lies that he tells us you've got plenty of time don't worry about it you've got plenty of time you don't have to believe that number one is Satan that tries to destroy our minds and tries to fill our minds with things of the world things that that uh, that anything that would distract you for he's the, a liar and the father of lies number two is self the pride of life 
many of mankind will have to die and limit their self by only their self, by the pride and the things of this world. Number one is Satan. Number two is self. And number three is sin. The Bible says, in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of their self. We have reached that day. But Paul said, this is the power of the gospel. That's what changes man's life. You know, we're, we're limited if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And then it's unlimited of what God can do. In Genesis chapter number 1, I got to thinking about the mankind is a special creation of God. We are His creation. He owns us by creation, for He created us. And then in the garden, man fell, and then He bought us back. You know, people say, well, I've never seen God. But I got to, you know what I think? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the invisible image of the living God. I can take my Bible and I can get over there in them red verses and I begin to read about my Jesus and I can see the Father through His eyes. I see how, how God comes to life in Him. He was the, uh, He is God. He is fully God. He was fully man. He came robed in flesh to show us the way home. He is the, we're made in His likeness. We are the image of God. He said, let us make man. You know what I believe? I didn't go to school to learn this, but I believe God the Father was there. I believe God the Son was there. I believe God the Holy Ghost was there. And they said, let us make man in our own image. You think about how we're made in the image of God. You know, Genesis is a book of beginnings. The beginning of the world, it tells us. The beginning of the human race. It tells us. It tells us of when sin came into the world. But it also gives us the promise of redemption in Genesis chapter 3. It shows us the beginning of family life. It shows us the beginning of civilizations of the world, the nations of the world. And also the, the beginning of the Hebrew people through Abraham and, and how, how God used that all the way down through the portals of time. To bring through the lineage of Jesus. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. And I wondered. I wondered this thought. <laughs> I wondered when Moses began to write the book of Genesis. I wonder if it was a, a real early morning where he had been up pondering <laughs> the things of God. And how God created all this. I wonder if it was a... a, a sitting on the side of a mountain. And as, as the sun began to twilight over the mountain, did Moses pin down the book of Genesis? <laughs> I wonder, as he was sitting maybe uh, on a moonlit night, as the cool breeze was blowing, and he could see the light that God created, I wonder, did he begin to pin the words, in the beginning, in the beginning was God. I wonder how he, how he came about to write this book only by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he was moved by God's Spirit to record this book. As we look upon our world and the wonderful creation of God, from the beauty of a small flower to the power of the oceans, to the mighty hurricanes that, that come through and the things that's, uh, of nature, even nature itself <laughs> teaches that, that God is real, that He's real. And that's how the power of the gospel comes. The Holy Ghost reveals to man that God is real. And what are you going to do with this man called Jesus? What, what are you going to do uh, with this gospel, this power of the gospel? I think about the birds as they fly in the sky. I think about the fish in the sea. And we're going to get into some of that. And he done all this.
in three days, in six days. He made all this in six days. As we awoke this morning, God created this day. No one else could create a day. No one else but my God could create this day that we're living in. David said in Psalm 1, uh, I think it's 118, verse number 24, This is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I think about my Father, my God, my Lord, my Creator, the Almighty, which was, which is, which is to come, is the only one that can create a day. And you think about our human bodies, how, how he's he done that. Uh, you think the vastness of this universe. You, as, as you sit on a starlit night, it's beyond our comprehension. It takes, our solar system is so large, it takes 248 years for Pluto to make it one lap around the sun. There are billions of stars and billions of galaxies and galaxies and, 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 and uh, open uh, spaces that scientists are just now comprehending. And I got to thinking about this thought. My God <laughs> created all of that. He knows every one of those stars by my name, by his by their names, by their each one of them by their name. The vastness of the creation of how great and how big God is. It goes beyond our human comprehension. There's no way that we can come to that to that knowledge of knowing just how big God is, how He creates. And you know something? This God wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. That goes beyond what I can think, that the Lord loves you, and the Lord loves you, and He created us, and He made a way that we can come to Him through His Son. Because the Creator wants to be worshipped by His creation. And we are created in His own image. Look how far we have come. He's already had to destroy it one time. Because men were so evil. Even the imagination of their thoughts was continually on evil at all times. And he had to destroy it. And he kept that... that uh, eight people and and that replenish the earth the creator wants to be worshiped by his creation let's read genesis chapter that very first verse in genesis 1 1 in the beginning god we could stop right there in the beginning god god has always been he is now and he always will be. He has always been. He is now. And he always will be. The creator. God. My father. Listen to Psalm 90 and verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. That's the God that I serve. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Listen to this. Hast thou not heard, hast thou, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. In the beginning God, out of nothing, he spoke it into existence. How do I explain that? <laughs> I don't know till I get home. For he is God. The creator of all the ends of the earth. He created the heavens and the earth. And the rest of this verse says, The heaven, in the beginning God, and created the heaven and the earth. The vastness of God's creating power. David said it like this. And we sing the song here. How excellent is thy name. Jehovah Jireh. The provider. The, the one that we look to. Listen to what he said. Oh, Lord, 
Psalm 8, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens, the creator, the glory above the heavens. Then in verse 3 of Psalm 8, David said it like this. And you think about this verse. When I consider the heavens, uh, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. And this verse right here, listen to verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him? God who created all of this vastness. It wants, all he wants is us to love him and have a relationship with him and be the people that he created us to be. To love thy neighbor as thyself. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Jesus said the whole law hinges on those two commandments. If we can do that, this vastness of this God that goes beyond anything we can even imagine or think wants to have a relationship with me and you. David said in Psalm 107 four times, in four verses these same words and with Psalm 107 verse 8 oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and whew, listen to this and his wonderful works to the children of men and there's an exclamation point at each one of these verse 15 oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men Verse number 21, all that the men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. In verse number 31, in that same psalm, David said it four times. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Out of nothing, God created this. And David said, oh, that we would praise him for his wonderful works. You know, David said we are wonderfully and beautifully made you think about the human body how it how it works and how how the vastness of of how he created us and the creator <laughs> wants to be worshiped by his creation that's all he asked of us out of nothing god created let's read verse two and the earth was without form and void and darkness was up on the face of the deep the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the face of the watery deep. Then God's Spirit moved across the face of the water. This was before light. This reminds me of the way I was before I asked God, the Holy Ghost, to move inside of me, and that seed was birthed. I was, I was dark, and I was without form, and I was void. I was in my sin I had no knowledge of God but then that seed that that I'm talking about the power of the gospel brother Paul was talking about that seed came unto me and I was no longer uh, in darkness for Jesus is the light of the world <laughs> and he is the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the Word was God. And same was in the beginning with God in John chapter 1. All things were created by Him. And without Him, not nothing was created. And in Him was light. And the light was the life of men. I was, I was dark and without form. And the earth was the same way. And it, was, it was created in darkness. The Bible says that, that we're dead in our trespasses and our sins. And then the Spirit of God moved across the face of the deep. In the realization, He created it out of nothing. He created us out of the dust of the earth. He created, he, he, he formed it and breathed into us that breath of life. I got to thinking about how powerful that one breath was. It's still going today. That one breath that God breathed into man 
He's preserved it. And the Creator wants to be worshipped by His Creator. And we're no longer in form, we're uh, no longer uh, in darkness. The Spirit came, but our next verse says this. Verse number 3, And God said, Let there be light. <laughs> and there was light. By His Word spoken, God said the life-giving of His eternal Word. He said, Let there be light. And out of nothing, there was light. Spoke it into existence. A light. This is a light-giving Word. It's also a life-giving Word. The Bible says in John's Gospel, In Him was life, and the life was the life of men. The Word will be the light of that city. When I hold my Bible, I'm, I'm holding Jesus, for He is the Word. I think about how, how powerful that Word is, that it goes forth, and out of nothing that He created us, and all He has to, He will be the light of that city when we get home. <laughs> well, I look forward to that day when we no longer have to fight this old flesh when we no longer have to war in our minds uh, my spirit sister my spirit wants to wants to be pure and worship him but my flesh wars against everything that I try to do I, I, I'll tell you what I did last night I tossed and I turned and, and I wor worried about uh, standing in front of you people but you know what I'm glad that I'm up here now for this is what preacher Nicky told me he said just give them your heart just give them your heart and I begin to think about this you know this heart it really belongs to Jesus it's not mine for I gave it away February the 8th, 1987. Lost. Not worshiping my Creator, for I knew not Him. But that light came. And that seed was born inside of me. And now I'm not the man that I used to be. And I, I don't say that in a boastful way. For I war against the same things that we all do. All, the, all, the, all that's in the world is, is, the, is the lust of the eyes. And we have to war against that. And the lust of the flesh, we have to war against that. And the pride of life, we have to war against that. I could not, I could not war against these things until the light came and the seed came. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. I would not go to hell for my friends. I would not go to hell for uh, my pride. I would not go to hell for, for uh, the things that's in the world. For you see that light. I want to worship my Creator that wants to be worshipped by His Creator. He is the very source of light. Let's read 4 and 5. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. What he created was good. He created all things, and he named them. He separated the light and the darkness. The light he called day, the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. God created the universe in six successful days. He rested on the seventh. What God created on the first three days, He filled on the last three days. First day, light. The second day, He separated waters. The third day, He separated the dry land from the water and vegetation came. On the fifth day, the air and the birds, the water and the fish. And on the, on the sixth day, animals, and He created us. Now let's talk about His image. Let's read, uh, let's go down to verse uh, number 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over creeping thing, 
over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He created man last, crowned of all he had made with humans, to have dominion over the animals and subdue the earth. God made man in his own image, not physical image, but ability to have the things that no other created creature that can have. The ability to reason. He gave us the ability to re The Creator gave us that reasoning to reason that we have. He gave us a moral conscience. You know, I, I think a lot of people in our world today is in Romans chapter 1 that their, their conscience is sheared with a hot iron to do the things which seems unseemly, the Bible says. He gave us a conscience. He gave us creativity to do the things. They, these people sitting in this church can do wonderful things with their hands and, and things that, that there's no way that I could do. There's, there, and I could probably uh, do some things at the garage on, w with a vehicle. And, and uh, you know something? God, God is here. He is in this building. For he said where two or three are gathered, he's in, he's in the midst. And he knows our feelings. And he knows what we're going through. And he knows our hearts. And he gave us creativity to do uh, the thing. But he wants a relationship with us because he loves us. That still overwhelms my mind. Let's read 28 and 31. And God blessed them, and, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is in the fruit of the tree, yielding seed to you, and it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God blessed them, and he's still blessing today. Be fruitful and multiply. We have uh, now in 2015, there's 7.3 billion people in our world here. In, that was in 2015. He said, subdue the earth, under control take or bring, um, have dominion over the animals and the vegetation. And God saw everything that he had done for his glory. He gave. It was for his glory. For God's work was finished and he rested on the seventh day. For his glory, the work creating the universe and ov is over. Now he's working to draw people unto himself is what he's doing. And invites us to, as his people to join him in that work. Paul said in that same chapter, in Romans chapter 1, he said, I am a debtor to the Greek, to the barbarian, to the wise, to the unwise. Matter of fact, I'm indebted to you, and you're indebted to me. And we're indebted to the people that's lost and undone in our world. For he finished his work, and he's, if you're born again, that seed lives within you. He gave that work to us to reveal himself to this world that the crea creation might worship that creator. It's overwhelming to me how, how he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And there's something about these, these uh, Sunday morning. You can come to church any other time, but there's a freshness and there's uh, excitement and there's uh, a work of the Holy Spirit in that Sunday morning service. I don't know. It's just completely different than any service. And I, I think how God has crowned it. Ah, oh, that day of rest. And uh, when we can come to the house of God and, and put our minds at ease and begin to worship Him. Uh, when I begin to worship Him, I don't think about the light bills. I don't think about the car payments. <laughs> I don't think about paying the rent over the garage. I don't think, uh, I really appreciate you boys coming. I love you. These boys is from my garage. It's a blessing that they're here. Uh, but I want to tell you something. It's our job 
for the Creator to try to bring people to Him. The rest of the church is, is uh, I'm going to tell you something, on a Sunday afternoon, after church is over, and uh, I could get in that recliner down at my house, that is some of the, the most sweetest sleep, Bill. Do you do that? I'm going to tell you something. There's, there's, it's the most peaceful time of, of being with my Creator when I'm just at ease and just worshiping Him. And He done all this so that we as His creation can worship Him. He loves us. It's overwhelming uh, the power and the love of God. And it's all in that gospel. The virgin birth, <laughs> the sinless life, whew, the death on the cross which was cruel and, and all that he had to go through. And at any time, he could have stopped it at any time. The vastness of his power that he had, that even the winds and the sea obey him, and how much he loves us. And that resurrection when he, he came out of there with the power of over death and hell and the grave. And now we don't have to face it. All because of the power of the gospel, his love he has for us. It's overwhelming. Out of nothing, he created it. And he loves us and wants to be loved by us. Come on in. Uh, and I'd like for her to play softly. I got to thinking about the parable of the prodigal son. We was going to do the skit. Remember the skit? We was going to do the parable. So, and I got to thinking about in Luke chapter number 15. And that uh, man had two sons. And one of them wanted his money. He wanted his dowry, and he destroyed it. Go ahead. And he, and he took all the money, and he went to a far country, and he wasted it, sister. Maybe we can do that sometime. But you know what? You know what that says to me? This is what it says. No matter where you been no matter what you've done no matter what sin you have committed you might have went far and wide the creator is saying this just come on home he said I love you I know you're going to sin and I know she's going to be out there lost before you ever did. I knew you before the foundations of the world, in Ephesians said. Before the world was ever formed, he knew you. The Creator wants to be worshipped by us, his, crea his creation. He wants to be worshipped by us. Let's bow our head. And close our eyes just a bit. If you've been sitting here and God has spoken to your heart and you've never experienced the freedom of sin, you could confess it. Here tonight the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy heart and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you can be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I don't know your state, but I know the Lord does. And I know that He loved you, and He knew that you would be sitting here tonight. I wonder if there'd be one in the house that would lift that hand to the Creator and say, Lord, I'm lost. I've never been saved. And I do not know you. I do not know that saying about being born again. I do not know what it means to my sin be under the blood of Jesus. 
would they be one in the house that would lift that hand care enough about your soul here in front of the creator that loves you would there be one anybody in the house you've heard the gospel you have no excuse the Bible says these words how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation it's we need a way of escape we're limited but there's a limit in this life anybody at all I just want to pray for you if you know you're lost just let me pray for you just lift that hand and let me know that you're not one of his do you care enough about your soul let us pray Father, we thank you, Lord, the creator of this universe. We come to you through the blood of your Son. Lord, you said to come giving thanksgiving, and we thank you, Lord, for our church. We thank you, God, for the congregation that makes it up. These sheep that's under our shepherd, our under-shepherd preacher, Nikki, Lord, I pray, God, that we would be a church that would be live, Lord, that would be eager to, to seek those that are lost. Lord, I pray, God, that you would be here. It's just a couple weeks till Bible school, Lord. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would come and little boys and girls, God, would be saved. I thank you, Lord, for being able to come tonight and just say a few words on your behalf. I try to do you proud, Lord, that you are my God and my Creator. And, Lord, we look forward to Sunday, and we pray, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would move in upon us and people would come to the knowledge of the truth. Ah, that you died for our sin. And we praise you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all, all stand and shake somebody's hand. and. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and love your neighbors yourself and I love you. <laughs>